everyone, my name is Emily. Today I'm going to be doing the dollar store challenge. Now because I love challenges like these, I'm going to be doing more in the future featuring different dollar stores. For this video, I decided to go to the Dollar Tree. And no, not the amazing, bountiful Canadian Dollar Tree, an American, an American Dollar Tree. A Midwestern, boxes everywhere, severely understaffed, mile long line, Dollar Tree. Womp womp. Up front, I wanna be clear, there is absolutely nothing wrong with using inexpensive art supplies. This challenge is about proving that it is your skill that matters, not the tools that you use. The tools are merely there to improve the artistic experience, not to define it. I will be using mechanical pencils, a Factus eraser, and I know I'm already cheating, the Dollar Tree does not carry Factus erasers, I just forgot to grab one while I was out, it's okay, they are still under a dollar. Permanent rollerball pens, white out, colored pencils by both Liquimark and Jot, permanent markers in vibrant colors as well as plain black, water-based markers, Highlighters that I didn't end up using, but oh my god, highlighters, I'm 12. Plastic palettes. And drawing paper that says it's heavyweight, but is probably only around 98 pound press or probably less. Initially, I was impressed with most everything, especially the paper. It ended up being way better than the cheap paper at Target that I used for my <clears throat> $10 art challenge. Shameless butt plug. The only thing that was kind of annoying was that the pencils came broke. <laughs> was that the pencils came broken. I'm the type of person who is nearly sexually aroused by a brand new set of pre-sharpened colored pencils, and I am fucking destroyed when they give you unsharpened color twigs. Like, what is this? But other than that, most of the stuff swatched pretty great. I decided to draw an older unicorn woman. I know we often think of unicorns as the penultimate symbol of purity and virginity, but I find that a lot of the time a secondary characteristic that is shown but not so much acknowledged is wisdom. When unicorns are represented or transformed into women, oftentimes they are young. I decided to subvert that cliche a bit and draw an older woman unicorn. She's beautiful, wise, and fucking badass. I mean, look, look at that. Look at, look, look at the hair. Look at it. Grandma didn't get run over by no unicorn. Grandma is the unicorn, bitch. She run over you. Oh, crrr. The permanent markers were fine for outlining, which wasn't a surprise. That's what I used to use when I was a beginner, so I was really familiar with how to get the most out of a wider nib. I couldn't use the rollerball pens right away because they weren't 100% truly waterproof. They bled quite a bit when the ink came into contact with water, so they were maybe like 80% waterproof. Initially, I used the water-based markers, kind of like watercolors, by scribbling the ink into the plastic palettes and then using water to thin the ink down. And yes, I I cheated again by using a Princeton Select round brush. I know it seems like I cheat a lot in these challenges, but a lot of stuff like an eraser and a very basic paintbrush is stuff that a lot of artists already have. There is a set of paintbrushes that the Dollar Tree usually carries that I have used in the past, they just didn't have it available when I was there. Anyway, I added water to the ink to thin it down and create a very light color. I only did this twice and it was only to lay down the base for the skin and for the very light shade of the horn. Then I blended some colored pencils to create shadow over the base. The colored pencils actually worked really well. Though if I were to recommend an affordable colored pencil, I would hold Crayola way over Jot in Liquimark. Another set of really great pencils that aren't too pricey are the Prismacolor Scholars. If you can shell out a few more bucks, those are really worth it too. After finishing off the shadows and blush on the skin, I started adding the really colorful details like the gemstone eyes and the multicolored hair. I would say the water-based markers are okay for adding small, bright details, but aren't great for blocking in large sections. Because 
Because the nib is so hard and fine, the larger blocks of color tend to be incredibly streaky. Even though the paper held up pretty damn good, it still wanted to tear and pill up with the saturation of the markers. The two best water-based markers I've ever used have been the Tombow Dual Tip Brush Pens and the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Brush Pens. They're both a little pricey, but definitely well worth the expense. If you need something more affordable, I would recommend Crayola again. A lot of the large blocks of color and colorful sketches in my older sketchbooks were done using a neon set of Crayola pipsqueaks. They still streak, but not nearly as bad as the really poorly made stick markers like these. I'm not so much a fan, however, of Crayola's brand of stick markers. They are notorious for leaking and oversaturating the paper, very similar to the ones I'm using here. The colorful permanent markers in this set worked fine, very similar to Sharpies. I don't have too much to say about them other than they worked pretty damn great. I'm glad they had the two sets of colors, one being a lot less saturated, I guess if you could call it that, than the other, more like neon pastel -y. They laid down a really smooth, flat color with minimal bleeding. I definitely recommend them. The biggest bummer in all of this was actually the whiteout and Yes, I know it was mostly my fault for not using it for its intended purpose, but still I had high hopes to use it for white highlights. Unfortunately, the whiteout dried way too quickly and ended up clumping on my brush, causing like weird chunks to fall on the painting. What was even more depressing was it just totally destroyed my paintbrush. Just RIP little fighter, RIP. The white outlines may look okay on the page, but that's after going in and and scraping off the chunks before they were able to adhere to the paper. I even smudged a few stars in the process, but that's okay because I'm an artist and I work with what I have been given. So I made a bunch of shooting stars. They are my exceptionally derpy happy accidents. RIP Bob Ross, RIP. My recommendation is to either nab some white gel pens or buy plain white gouache or acrylic ink. The whiteout is just not cut out for this. Overall, I really enjoyed playing with all these art supplies. It really bothers me when people make a huge deal about how quote unquote bad inexpensive art supplies are because not all of them are. It makes people seem spoiled when they complain the entire video about how horrible it is to work with all these cheap art supplies that they got. There will definitely be cheap art supplies that reflect their cost and are hard to work with, but when you close your mind off to all other products than the ones you're used to working with, it cripples you as an artist. You sometimes have to think outside of the box when you're using unfamiliar supplies, and that's what makes this a challenge. It's not meant for you to shit on cheaper things. It's meant to encourage those who aren't always fortunate enough to splurge on expensive art supplies. Remember, it's about the artist and their skills, not their supplies. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to stay out of trouble. See you guys later.